Over the air software updates are now very much an expected feature for any new EV. Not only can your car learn new tips and tricks as they're developed by your automaker, but if there's a particular issue with your vehicle that would traditionally require an in-person recall visit to a dealership to have your vehicle reprogrammed, you can often have that same issue fixed via an over the air software update recall campaign. I'm not gonna get into the ins and outs of this. Okay, technically we can use software update or recall, but recall is to fix something that is in violation of official safety standards for the country where the vehicle is in. Let's just leave it there and let legislators and regulators battle out if and when changes to that definition are required. While Tesla wasn't the first automaker to offer remote telematics and connectivity for its vehicles, Mercedes-Benz, Cadillac and a few others were doing that in the late 1990s. Tesla was the first to offer over-the-air software update in a large volume production vehicle. If you own a Tesla made since 2012 and, in the case of some older Teslas, you opted to have the modem upgraded to an LTE version so you could still make use of onboard telematics when its respective 3G network was deactivated, your car can still get OTA updates. Since Tesla first started OTA, it's been joined by most rival automakers in the EV space, with everyone from Rivian and Lucid to GM and Ford offering over-the-air software updates. And for the most part, OTA updates take place seamlessly, often at night when you're not using the vehicle, although the specifics of how each update is applied does depend on the exact vehicle you have, any preferences pertaining to OTA updates you may have set up, and who it was who made your car. But over the recent holiday period, we heard of the ultimate horror story for anyone whose car is capable of OTA, a failed update that left an owner's car in an undrivable state. So today, I'm going to examine this particular update, one of a Ford Mustang Mark E, examine some of the past software updates that have caused glitches for various automakers, and ask if there's anything you can do to help avoid becoming someone whose car bricks itself. OTA updates are all the rage these days. Everyone's doing it. And they can help both automakers and owners reduce the number of service visits and improve overall vehicle operability. Without OTA, for example, many EV owners today won't be able to look forward to a future where they could, with the help of an adapter, make use of any Tesla superchargers as seamlessly as they might use other charging stations from other providers. Don't worry, Kate's doing a video all about that very spoon. I mean, soon. Without over-the-air updates, they may not be able to pull the switch on some feature or other that shipped with their cars but was deactivated at the point of sale. Something like Tesla FSD Beta. Or perhaps, as in the case of my truck, adaptive headlights. And without OTA updates, we wouldn't so easily or quickly get improved charging curves or tweaked battery management software, all designed to let our cars drive further, charge more quickly and have a longer, happier life. And it's here that we turn our attention to Ford and its over-the-air software update system, a system that allows customers' cars to receive Ford Power Up software updates through either the vehicle's built-in data modem or by connecting your car to a local Wi-Fi network. Ford has been offering Power Up for some of its vehicles for some time, and both its current electric vehicle lineup as well as some of its newer internal combustion engine vehicles can receive them. Just about two weeks ago, we started to hear stories of Ford Mustang Mark E's that effectively became bricks, meaning they couldn't move under their own power after Ford's Power Up software version 6.8.0 failed to properly finish loading in affected cars. And that meant the center touchscreen display showed a warning message that read, quote, unfortunately, a recent software update was not successful. Your vehicle cannot be driven, end quote. It then gave the telephone number for Ford's Customer Relationship Center and displayed on-screen instructions designed to instruct tow truck operators on how to properly and safely put the car onto a flatbed tow truck for transportation to a local dealership. 
Because Ford pushes its updates in waves, to its credit, Ford was able to halt the process of pushing updates to any more vehicles. And we are actually filming this the first day back after the New Year break, and as at the time of filming and editing, haven't yet heard back from Ford as to what exactly happened. But Ford is pretty responsive to media inquiries, so when we do hear back, we'll let you know. Browse forums like markeforum.com and you'll see a few people affected by the story. But for any issue like this, there are also going to be owners who aren't forum members who are likely having the same issue. According to secondhand evidence posted on some forums and on Facebook, it appears other Ford models also had some recent issues with software updates. Ford Broncos and F-150s all appear to have been affected to some extent, and Ford is working to get all affected vehicles fixed and back on the road. What does that look like? Well, after being towed to a local dealership, Ford technicians have to manually connect the onboard computer to a laptop, reset some software fail codes set by the failed update, codes which are setting error conditions and prevent further attempted over-the-air updates until cleared, and then manually update the vehicle system using FDRS, Ford's system that allows mechanics to reprogram modules in Ford vehicles using a laptop and a special dongle. Both ones with and over-the-air software update capabilities run the same software. We don't know how many vehicles were affected by the issue. I did ask Ford, but again, we haven't heard back yet. But one thing that does confuse me is how I was originally told Ford's Mustang Mark E onboard update system would work back in 2019. At that point, I seem to recall Ford told journalists that the Mustang Mark E would use a system similar to the dual BIOS systems found in some high-end gaming computers. Downloading the software update in the background and then flashing it to the car's computer system. But then, and only when you turn the car back on, would it switch to using the new software update, which seamlessly ensured that even if there was a failed update, you could go back to the previous version and you'd not be left with a bricked vehicle. Now, that's clearly not what we got in the production vehicle. And maybe it's me. Maybe I misunderstood the briefing during the car's launch. Or indeed, something changed with the production vehicle, which was released a full year after the reveal event that I attended. I'm not a technician and I don't know the differences between the prototype and production model. But what I should note again is that I have asked Ford for clarification and you've guessed it, we'll let you know as soon as we hear something. Regulars to the channel will also know that I've experienced my own issues with Ford's over-the-air software update system, namely a faulty 12-volt battery prevented my truck from carrying out a particular over-the-air software update. But after I'd had that 12-volt accessory battery replaced under warranty, Everything updated as it should, and I've not had any further problems. Updates so far have taken place as planned, and I've had a few software updates since that point that have updated without any problems at all. But look, it's obviously not particularly good to have a car you rely on become an expensive paperweight, and while those who've had their cars towed to the dealerships are now starting to get their cars back all fixed, the chances are you probably don't want to get yourself in this situation in the first place. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to avoid becoming someone with a bricked vehicle in a second, but let's just tackle the elephant in the room. OTA update failures are rare, but they happen. And they happen to many different types of car. We've heard of Tesla OTA updates fail in the past, and not so long ago, Rivian pushed an over-the-air software update that caused some pretty big headaches for its customers. Pretty much every automaker to date who uses OTA has at some point or another had a failed update or something go wrong. But luckily, even if an update has the potential to cause problems, it doesn't always mean it will. Why do those failures happen? 
It could be for any number of reasons. It could be a lack of testing at the automaker in question, or maybe an error compiling the final update for a particular set of vehicles, or frankly, even a cosmic ray. Sometimes an error in transmission can even cause the problem. Sometimes it's literally just bad luck. And I'm not kidding about the cosmic ray. If you are not a super nerd and you don't already know about cosmic ray bit flips, Google it. And I'll also leave a link to a video in the down below that you can blow your mind with. It's really mind blowing. Usually if an over the air update is FUBAR, don't look that one up if you are with someone of a nervous disposition. It doesn't actually cause problems because various software protections, such as checksumming, will flag the problem long before it is actually thrown into the car as an official update. But sometimes this will happen and then you're left calling a tow truck. Should you worry about this? Worry about it happening to your vehicle? Not accept software updates? You shouldn't worry. Software updates usually carry out just fine and dandy, but just like the occasional software update can cause your smartphone, laptop or tablet computer to just behave a little wonky, so too can a software update cause unexpected problems for your vehicle, especially if you happen to have personalized settings that are a little different or perhaps weren't tested against by the development team. Obviously, if you are 100% dependent on your vehicle for whatever reason, then yeah, I, I get your concern. But also, there's not a lot you can do about it if you want to drive a newer vehicle, EV or, or not. Most cars now have OTA. Which brings me to the actual process of keeping yourself free of problems and hopefully making sure your vehicle doesn't end up a brick with a failed update. But first, let me be clear, software updates are generally good. You should generally apply them, just like a security update for your computer, OTA updates for your car should be treated as something that you should probably apply. But just like, hopefully, you don't have your computer set to automatically update whenever there's a new operating system update, you really shouldn't set your car to automatically update whenever there's one available. A knowledgeable computer user knows that it's usually a good idea to wait a few days after an update is posted before you click to initiate that upgrade. A knowledgeable computer user knows that it's worth reading the software update release notes to see what's actually changed and why the update was needed in the first place. On the computer, you should check that the update is friendly with the software you use on a daily basis and keep your eye on social media or user forums for any issues that other people have experienced. Oh, and keep a known good backup just in case things go wrong. Yeah, sure. If the update includes a zero day exploit patch or some other really important security update that really is something you should apply immediately, yes, go ahead. But otherwise, sit and wait a while. Let other people be the testers. Let them test the update first, as it were. Obviously, when it comes to an automotive update, it's not usually possible to make a backup that you can boot from if things go wrong. But again, there are some really simple steps to avoid a heartache. Set your car to carry out daily checks for software updates and many telematic systems will actually even notify you if there is an update for your vehicle via companion smartphone apps. Next, set your car to not update automatically when there's an update available and instead to only update when you tell it to. That way, you'll know that when there is an update, the car won't apply it unless you say it's cool. Then, well, Play it cool and keep it safe. Keep your eyes peeled for other owners having issues and having read the release notes. Yeah, I, I know Ford and many other automakers really suck at writing release notes. Get it together, Ford. Set aside some time when you don't need to use your vehicle. Make sure you're at home and that your car has a good internet connection to the update server, either using its built-in cellular connection or Wi-Fi. Then, and only then, 
Should you follow the update procedure and assuming everything goes according to plan, you'll get some shiny new software to play with. And if you are someone who applies updates when you're away from home, or someone who, gods forbid, just lets the vehicle do it when it wants to, you are playing a very dangerous and slightly exciting game. Oh, and there's one more thing. Familiarise yourself with your car's recommended turning instructions. This includes how to get the car into neutral, just in case the worst happens. And you should also be sure that you know the software update revision number before you click update. Write it down, put it on your phone, because if it goes wrong, you'll need that when you call for backup. There you have it. Practice safe software updates for your car. Don't be left out in the cold. Don't take silly risks with your pride and joy. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube. They help cover our bills, pay our team, and make sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them, and of course see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for, from as little as just $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Nathan Plowman, Hanno, Bender, Estelle, and Sarah J. Goodfriend. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have a good old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. The address is linked to below. And if you're in need of some swag, you should also check out our swag store in the down below too. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. Don't forget, we make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think that this one is also worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving. I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of this. Okay, software update is to fix something that's in violation of official... You're good? Yeah, 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 I'm going to have to go. Right, okay.